Yeah, so this part has a little bit of everything. Like on the outside of the cage here, you had to worry about blending everything together. Uh, now on the inside, you have to worry about getting through these windows here. And looking at the machining footage, I saw an awful lot of rotary movement there. Was that really necessary? Yeah, so those toolpaths look really cool, really impressive, right? With sticking the tool all the way through this opening and reaching some of those faces. It actually was necessary. We really had to have those really complicated ops because, you know, from the first setup, we tried to access as much as we could, right? So in setup one, we reach from inside the part and we reach down inside and we get the backsides of some of these things. But because we can't angle the tool very far without hitting over here, we weren't able to get some of these undercut areas. So when we flip the part upside down, we can come through one of these openings and reach these really hard to reach faces. But that is a really difficult looking piece of programming. Believe it or not, it was actually really easy. So in this operation, we're essentially finishing that whole face of that cheek area through one single opening. Now you can see, this is a really tall toolpath. It gets that whole side done in one operation. If I run Analyze Toolpath here, you can kind of see what this toolpath looks like as we would flow through it. The tool is very stationary right where it needs to be, right? Like you can see all the motion at the tip of the tool, but as it passes through this opening, the tool is perfectly stationary. Can you guess what tool axis control I use there? I'm guessing that's probably a from point. And the other thing I'm looking at, it seems like the tool gets really, really close to the fixture. This fixture I actually designed maybe four months before creating this toolpath. So in this case, when I made this toolpath, you can see it is extremely close to this fixture as it starts to reach. I mean, it is extremely close. And this is where all the simulation software came in, right? So I was using everything I had access to from Mastercam Verify, Machine Sim, Simco Verify, Vericut. I used everything because in this case, these operations are the ones that make this part really cool. We gotta get through this thing, we gotta access the back of that cheek part, create a good surface finish, all while not crashing the machine. So it looks really cool, and like you said, with that front point tool axis control, essentially, these are the two points that I made just in 3D space, just kind of a rough point as close as I could get to create that tool motion. You know, creating the tool motion is the same as any other unified automatic tool path where you have a drive surface, we retract it up to the actual mesh bodies, and everything comes from that point. What's really cool about this is I could do this without any automatic tilting collision control. So all of the tilting is handled from the tool axis control, meaning this toolpath generates extremely quickly. Again, this is the power of the Mastercam Unified Toolpath. It actually was relatively easy to do those sorts of things. So I learned a lot. And if you learned something, or if you have any questions, you can leave a comment. If you want to see how we made this part, the Mastercam part file is available for download on the Mastercam Tech Exchange. And if you want to see this part or a part like it, visit us at an open house or a trade show. We always try to have some really cool partnership projects with us on display. Again, thanks to our partners for making this possible. Thanks for watching.